Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, majority element two. I highly, highly recommend you solve the first version of this problem before trying to tackle this one, even though this one is slightly different and the solution definitely is a bit different, but we're given an integer array of size N and we wanna find all elements that appear more than this many times. Now this is the floor, it's not written super well, but basically taking the length, uh, dividing by three and rounding that down. So what does that mean? If you took a number like nine and rounded that down, well, it you don't need to round it, right? It divides pretty evenly and you get three. So we want, if we had an array of length nine, we want all the elements that appear more than three times. First version of this problem was taking N and dividing it by two. And that is the majority element, like an element that takes up more than half of the array. But this time we want elements that take up more than a third of the array. If you were to take a number like 10, which doesn't divide evenly, but you still round it down, we would get three as well. So we want elements that appear more than three times. And in that case, we'd get four. Four is more than a third of 10. So that's kind of the idea. But in terms of the solution, it's not super complicated. We could very easily solve this problem with a hash map, couldn't we? Just count the occurrences of every single element and then afterwards go through every element in the hash map and just check, is the count greater than n divided by three? Is the count greater? If it is, then we add that to the result. And if it's not, we don't add it to the result. Well, first of all, you should recognize that the output is not going to be arbitrarily large. I said that we want elements that are that like take up more than a third of the array. How many elements do you think can do that in a single array? Probably no more than two elements. Suppose we had an array of size four and let's say we have a one and a one and a two and a two. These both would be the result. So the result would be one, two, because each of these takes up more than a third of the array, but it can't really be larger than that. And it could theoretically be zero. Like if we have an array like one, two, three, four, none of these take up more than a third of the array. So in that case, the output is gonna be zero. We're not guaranteed anything in this problem. So those are a couple points I wanted to make, but going back to the hash map solution. Yes, a hash map is actually perfectly valid. What is gonna be the time complexity for that? Probably O of N to count all of the occurrences and also O of N for the size of the hash map in the worst case. That works, but we are actually able to take the space and reduce it down to big O of one. That's actually the follow-up question if you go to the bottom of the description of this question. And it's possible, but it's not necessarily easy, or at least easy to come up with. Once you know it, it's actually pretty easy. The concept is pretty simple. We once again actually use a hash map, but this time, we're gonna make sure the size of the hash map is always gonna be less than three. In other words, the idea here is going to be that this hash map only contains the two most frequent elements. So the idea is actually simple enough. Now, coming up with it and implementing it is not simple until you actually see it. And to show you, I'm going to basically go through an example. So let's do that now. So suppose we have an array like this. This is our hash map. We're mapping a number to the count of that number. So we start here, we have a one. We add one to the hash map. What's the count of it? It's of course one. Then we have a two. So these are our two most frequent elements so far. Each has a count of one. Now we get the third element three. So we map it to its count three. But we don't want this guy to grow arbitrarily large, so we have to restrict it. So what do we do? I mean, all three of these have the exact same length. Which one do we remove? We can't like pick. I mean, there's no intelligent way to pick which one to remove. But what if I told you we can remove all of them, but why? Why can we remove all of them? I thought we we're trying to count the two most frequent elements. Well, yes, we are trying to do that, but we also know that we don't really care about any of the candidates 
if the like count of those candidates is less than a third or even equal to a third of the input. It has to be greater than the length or it has to be greater than a third of the length of the input. So my argument to you is this, as soon as the length of the hash map becomes greater than two, meaning basically three, like when once it's equal to three, we are going to then decrement the count of every single number in the input. And if the count of any of the elements is equal to zero, we remove that from the hash map. So this time we're removing all three, but it's guaranteed that we would always remove at least one of them. And that's because like at some point, like let's say the count was two of each of these, and then we add a three and then the count is one. Like when we add the third element, the count is always going to be one. So at the very least, we're always going to remove at least one element to make sure that the size of the hash map does not become greater than two. That's kind of the intuition here. So now just going through the rest of this example, let's say our now hash map is empty. We've already gone through these three elements. Now we get a one, we add it back to the hash map, count is one. Now we get a two, add it back to the hash map, count is one. So what do we return in this case? We return these two elements. They're the two most frequent elements. But in this case, it does work out. The length of this is five, divide that by three and round down, you get one. Each of these has a count of two. So obviously this has a count, like a frequency greater than this. And this also has a frequency greater than that. But that's not always going to be the case, actually. If we had a different input array like one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a seven and eight, actually, we would get kind of the same thing. First, we'd add these three to the hash map and then remove all three of them. Then we'd add these three to the hash map and then once again, remove all of them. By the end, these two elements, seven and eight would be left in the hash map and we don't want to return those as a result. They are definitely not taking up more than a third of the array. So what we learned here is that even though we are theoretically trying to keep the two most frequent elements in this hash map, that's not actually what we're doing. We actually don't end up with the two most frequent elements, at least not in this example, because all of these are the most frequent. They all have the same frequency. And just because these two are left in the hash map doesn't mean they take up more than a third of the array. So what we have to do when we have this resulting hash map, we then have to verify for each number, is the count actually greater than a third of the length? And that's not difficult to do. We can literally just get the real count of seven and eight, which is actually the same. It's going to be one for each of them. And then uh, compare that to n divided by three. So we can verify that these are actually taking up more than a third of the array. Another quick example to really get this point across is what if the array actually looked like this? We have a one, two, one, two, one, two, and then we start getting some different elements like three, four, five. Well, our hash map would eventually, like by the time we get to this point, our hash map would map one to three, would map two also to three, and then we'd insert a three. We'd get three maps to one. And at this point, we'd decrement each of these by one, which would end up removing this, and we'd get these two set to two each. Once again, when we get to the four, we're gonna do the same thing, add four to the hash map, and then remove it because our like length of the hash map became three. So we have to decrement each of these by one. So then we decrement this and this down to one as well. And then lastly, we'd get to five. Now five is going to map to one. I know this drawing is getting a bit bad, but we'd remove five. We'd take this count, decrement it to zero, take this count and also decrement it to zero. And now these would be popped. And by the end, we'd have an empty hash map. Basically, there's no solution to this problem. Does that look right to you? Yeah, because one takes up exactly a third of the array, two takes up a third of the array, and here is also a third of the array. But we want elements that take up more than a third of the array. So if we instead in this example actually didn't have a five, then by the end of like inserting this and this, we'd have a count of one for each of these. That doesn't guarantee a solution, but then we would verify that the counts, like the true counts of one and two, which are three, is gonna be greater than eight, 
divided by 3, rounding down, which is going to be 2. So this actually does work. I know, I know it's not easy to come up with, and that's because it's a hard problem, especially if you're trying to solve this problem like this with constant memory, but that's kind of the benefit. But now let's go ahead and code it up. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a hash map. And in Python, you can actually create default dictionaries, which means you can have a default value. In this case, I'm passing an int, which means the default is going to be an integer of zero. So now when we go through every number in here and try to count it, and we try to increment the count of this by one, we don't have to verify that like n is already in the hash map. Because if it's not, this will give it a default value of zero, and then we'll increment zero to one. But we have this, this is fine. We're just getting the count of each number. But remember, if the length of the hash map is greater than two, then we got to do some stuff. We have to decrement the count by one. Now, I know that this is going to get like highly nested. So I'm actually going to do the opposite here. I'm going to say if the count is less than or equal to two, let's continue, meaning we don't have to decrement the count. We just continue to the next iteration of the loop. But if it is actually greater than two, then we have to go through every uh, number and count. And I'm going to do that like this count dot items in the hash map. It just is kind of a shorthand. And then we unpack the key, which is the number and the count. And we're going to check. And one way to do this would be to just take count of n and decrement it by one. And then after here, we could then go through the count hash map again. And if any of the counts are equal to zero, we remove them. You might think first to try that in here, like put an if statement here. If the count of n now is equal to zero, can't we just do count dot pop n? No, because we're iterating over a hash map and we don't want to change the length of the hash map as we iterate over it. So this is not a good thing to do. So another way of writing this, uh, there is that like two loop solution I talked about, but another way is to actually declare a new hash map, a new counter. And I'm going to do the same thing, default dict with int. And doing it this way, we can check if the count is greater than one, then we know that this number is going to go in the new hash map. Why did I do that? And what is the count going to be? The count is going to be the original count minus one. That probably makes sense. It's same as the drawing explanation, but why am I only adding elements that have a, gr a count of greater than one to the new count hash map? Well, because if it had a count of one, that would mean we're decrementing it down to zero. And of course, we don't want to keep anything that has a count of zero in the hash map. So that's why I'm writing it this way. Now, after we do that, we want to update the count to the new count hash map, and then we're done. After we do this, if there is a solution to this problem, like if any elements in the array show up greater than a third of the time, they will be in this count hash map. This is actually not necessarily going to be the two most frequent elements as we talked about earlier. But if there's a solution, we know for sure that those elements will be in there and we want to add them to an array before we return them. And how do we verify that those elements do show up greater than a third of the time? Well, it's pretty easy. Just iterate over those elements. And this is misleading. Like this is not going to be big O of n time. We know there's at most two elements in that hash map. Now we want to check, well, what's the count of each element? And this time I'm going to do something not the most efficient, but it's easy to code. And I don't think it's bad. It's not going to affect the overall time complexity. I'm just going to take nums dot count of n. This is a linear time operation. But as I talked about, this is only going to execute two times at most two times. So doing a linear time operation two times is not that bad. It doesn't affect the overall time complexity. It's still a linear time solution. But we're checking the count of this and we just want to make sure it's greater than the length of nums divided by three. If it is, then we will append it to the result. That's the entire code. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.